In this video, we'll look at the effect of inflation on our minimum attractive rate of return. And if you think about all of the problems we've been doing so far in the course, when we use the company's MAR, we haven't really accounted for inflation at all. So in this part of the course, we think about how the inflation rate really will affect the minimum attractive rate of return for projects and how a company can make decisions uh, taking into account the rate of inflation. So let's just start for a moment. We think about some, uh, some dollar amount, some amount of money, we'll just call it M. And if I think about how much that money will be worth, let's say one year from now, really it's worth M times one plus I, where I is the interest rate that it will earn. However, if inflation is occurring in the background, then the buying power of M dollars will also decrease, and it decreases by the rate of inflation. So I can write something like this, where I've increase the dollar amount by the amount of interest that it earns in one period, and then I've decreased the value by the, uh, the value of inflation. And it's useful at this point to introduce another term, and we'll call it the real interest rate, I prime, where I prime, I could say my one plus I prime is going to be defined as equal to our one plus I over one plus F. And you may remember something similar when we looked at a geometric gradient where we had interest and we also have a growth rate in payments. This is something similar. Um, in this case, we have uh, inflation that is reducing the buying power or the value of M. So uh, in this case, we could, um, we could simply rearrange this formula to, to be able to calculate uh, this value, and I'll write it in here. This is the real interest rate. I would define that as one plus I over one plus F minus one. I've just rearranged this formula. Well, it may also be useful for us um, if we know, say we're given a real interest rate or a company says, I want to earn interest that really earns me a certain amount um, taking into account inflation, then I may be interested to know, well, what, uh, what value of I perhaps as quoted by banks or as we calculated in previous problems, do I need to see in order to get a real rate of return equal to I prime? And if we do this, we could, we could, simply, uh, we could simply rearrange this formula. I can say um, one plus F times one plus I prime is equal to one plus I. And then if you think back to your high school algebra, what I have here will become one plus um, I prime plus F times I prime. Sorry, it's so a one plus I F plus F equals one plus I. Now I can subtract uh, one from both sides and I end up with an equation for my, what we'll call the current interest rate. Our current interest rate will simply be equal to I prime plus F I prime plus F, where very often this term uh, is quite small because we have two small numbers multiplied together, it gets even smaller. So sometimes we'll ignore that, but we don't need to uh, in our calculations. So um, really this is how we can relate current interests. This would be interest rates sort of as quoted by banks 
uh, or bonds or whatever it is that's quoting a, uh, an interest rate that would be applied to current dollars and how we can relate that to our real interest rate which better reflects what our true buying power is um, based on this new investment. Now, in this equation, the reason I write this equation like this is that I can also come back and say that uh, if you think about this from the point of view of a company, if I think about the I as the company's MAR, where to this point in the course we've used we've used MAR in place of I. So if I have the company's MAR, and I say the company's MAR is going to be equal to its real MAR, right? that will be analogous to this real interest rate, plus inflation times the real MAR plus inflation. And this we'll call the current MAR. I can now apply this formula in problems where I'm interested in finding the company's um, real MAR or in problems where I'm trying to decide whether or not I should undertake a project. I can then come back and say, well, what's the, what's the current MAR and then what's the MAR as it relates to what I estimate the value of inflation to be in order to calculate a, a, a real MAR. Probably better to explain this through the use of a problem. So at this point, I'd encourage you to pause the video, um, keep this idea in mind, um, and when you want to see the solution to the problem, uh, restart the video. So in this problem, uh, we're told of a person who is trying to decide whether or not they should undertake a particular investment. And this person has uh, $1,000. We're told that this person's real MAR, that is the amount of return that they would really like to get uh, on their investments, taking into account inflation, is 4%. So if we have a real MAR of 4%, and we're also told in the problem that inflation is expected to be 3.5%, the question becomes, should this person invest in a guaranteed investment certificate that's advertising a rate of return of 6.5%? And so the bank is advertising this uh, guaranteed Investment Certificate, GIC, they can earn 6.5%. So the question becomes, should this person invest the $1,000 in this GIC if they would really like to earn 4% interest after inflation of 3.5%? So the way to, to evaluate this, we can, calculate, um, we can calculate the current MAR that would be the MAR that we could compare to the investment in order to make the decision as to whether or not this investment should be undertaken or not. So uh, I can go back to my formula and I can say that this individual's current MAR is going to be equal to their real MAR, which is the 4%, plus, I'll just write this term first, the 3.5% infl inflation plus the product of these two. And that comes from our formula. And what I find is this value comes out to 0 0.0764 or 7.64%. So what this means is that if this person has a real MAR of 4%, inflation is going to be 3%, they, their minimum attractive rate of return in the current dollar world is going to be 7.64%. This is higher than what the bank is currently advertising 
for this GIC. So if you're this person, you would say, that's, that's not enough to be attractive to me. I know that if I want to earn a real MAR of 4%, then I know inflation is 3.5, then I would not invest because this number is uh, this number is less than the value of my current MAR. So in this example, we illustrate how to use, how to incorporate inflation into the decision-making uh, for investments.